what's the nature of genius? What separates people who have wisdom from those who don't? There's lots of facets of genius. Some things don't, you know, it, it, it's too hard to categorize and define in one way. But I think a certain kind of genius, one aspect of it, one portion of it, involves the following phenomenon. You have a problem, you come to this person, this genius, this expert, this wise person, and you say, here's my problem. They think for a little while, then they say some words, almost like magic. They're just some words. Anybody could have said those words. Before he said them, you had no idea what he was going to say. You had a real difficult problem. But after he, it's spoken, it seems almost obvious. It's, it's reasonable. You suddenly understand. There's illumination. There's enlightenment. Not all geniuses like this. Some is more profound. Some is less. But I think this is an important quality of genius, and that's what I want to talk to you about today, about the relationship between that kind of genius and trading, you know, efficiency. Well, an example, a biblical example, King Solomon. Two women come to King Solomon, each claiming the child is their own. Uh, they don't know what to do. They've tried every other, they've tried whatever, mediation, arbitration, whatever they had at that time. And no one else on earth is able to solve their problem. They both claim the child is their own. King Solomon, of course, famously said, cut the child in half and give a half to each, each woman. One woman said, okay, that sounds good. The other woman said, no, 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 no. Don't cut the child, give it to the other woman. Uh, clearly she must be the mother because she cares more about the child's welfare. Now, that's wisdom. As soon as that's done, King Solomon knew that that would happen. Everyone clearly figured out who the mother was. That's wise. But it wasn't, what, three or four words? Cut the baby in half, that's it? Anybody could have said that, but they didn't. So what I want to use about that aspect of genius, that kind of wisdom, is the ability to search. Search. Uh, think of finding a needle in a haystack. It's hard. It's hard to find a needle in a haystack. But once someone points out that needle to you, you can, obviously, it's not, it's not hay. It's a needle. Done. I think that's the aspect of genius that I want to focus on. It's an, it's, I think it is an aspect of genius. Maybe there's other aspects, of course. But the ability to find something faster than other people, plus the second quality, which is once it's found, it's very easy to verify. Chess is a good example. You, uh, when two great, the world championship chess matches play, grandmasters, you know, they, they draw all over the board. What do they think they're going to do? This move, that move, all sorts of things. And then the guy is just sitting there thinking, he makes some move completely unexpected. No one even thought about it. Or if they did, they quickly discarded it. And yet now that the move is done, and they continue analyzing it, oh, this is a brilliant move. And it's an obvious move. And now in this situation, any time it comes up in the future, everybody will make that move. It's the difference between search and verification. Trading is a kind of genius, or trading shares this similar quality with this particular aspect of genius. Namely, let's imagine you're looking at a price ticker. So here's, here's prices moving up and down. What do you want to do? Do you want to buy or sell at this point? Okay, how about now? How about now? Buy or sell? Now, if you're just looking at it, you know, you make some decisions. Maybe you guess right, maybe you guess wrong. But if I show you more of it, and you look back, and someone told you, you know, I sold here, and then it fell down. You say, of course you sold there. It's obvious. Right? In retrospect, it seems like that was a natural thing to do. Certainly, verification is trivial. When it comes to trading, just look at your profit. If you sold and it went down, and you bought, and you made money. That's easy to check. If you sold it, went up, you lost money. Again, easy to check. But how do you know what to do? In this pattern, is there some way of making money consistently? Can you buy and sell? and make money? If you can, then this market is inefficient. That's a technical term in finance. It means it's, there is a way to make money. There's a hypothesis in finance called the efficient market hypothesis that markets are efficient. There is no way to consistently make money using nothing but the history of past prices as your guide. Let's say that again. So efficiency in the market means you cannot make money on average in the long run using just past prices. The word efficiency, so economists and finance people have been accused of using human words in technical situations. Efficiency is something we all care about as people. Um, we don't want waste. We don't, we don't like extra th things being thrown out. We all want to be efficient, get the most out of what we do. But is market efficiency really getting the most out of the market in some way? Sort of. There's a, other aspects of efficiency, economic efficiency, and there's also computational efficiency. Now, computational efficiency comes back to the search, the finding the needle in the haystack. And the most famous question unanswered in computer science is this one. Okay, this P equal 
and P. What, what do these stand for, first of all? P stands for polynomial. That means it's an algorithm that for an input of size n, it can find the answer in a time that's polynomial in order of n. Basically, you can think of it as linear. Um, it, you can find an answer quickly. If it's order, if it takes, you, it, if you go from 10, a, an input of size 10 to an input of size 11, um, it'll take you, instead of 10 seconds, it'll take you 11 seconds. Basically, that's a P. Those are quick algorithms. So if I ask you to um, add up all the numbers from 1 to 100, that takes you a certain amount of time. And if I ask you to go from, to add up all the numbers from 1 to 101, that'll take you a little bit longer, but not that much longer. It's polynomial. NP, NP, the N does not stand for non-polynomial. It stands for non-deterministic. Uh, it's an algorithm that is still polynomial, but you're allowed to guess. You're allowed to guess. Uh, this P has to be a deterministic polynomial. You always you know exactly what you're going to do. A non-deterministic polynomial, uh, you basically are allowed to do lots of things at once. So for example, NP is the set of all, anything that's in search that is quickly verifiable is NP. Why? Because you can non-deterministically check every single needle or haystack, and in polynomial time, in, in constant time, check whether it's a piece of hay or a needle. That's non-polynomial time. Now, it's obvious that anything that you can um, compute in polynomial time, you can obviously check in polynomial time. So P, the set of all quickly computable algorithms, quick recipes, efficient things that you can very quickly decide, that's a set P. So P, that's P and NP. NP, the search. That's where King Solomon lives. That's where wise people are, and this particular brand of genius. P is for regular folk. P is for all the people in the crowd who didn't have the wisdom to say, let's saw the baby in half. Um, and what about, so that's computational efficiency. And the biggest unanswered question is, does P equal NP? In other words, if there is something that you can quickly verify, does that mean you can also quickly find it, quickly search for it? If it were, what a world that would be. Chess would be solved. If you can verify that it's a good move, then you can figure out ahead of time that it's a good move. That's what it would mean for P to equal NP. If you can appreciate art, if you can tell whether this is good art and this is bad art, then you can generate good art. That's what it would mean if P equaled NP. It's a weird world to live in where it's almost like heaven. Anything you want, no problem. Very quickly you could compute it. Any question you could ask. The more likely situation is that P is not equal to NP. And it's harder to search than it is to verify. That seems to make sense. That's what, if you ask computer scientists in a poll, overwhelmingly, virtually everyone believes that P does not equal NP. That's computational efficiency. What about market efficiency? Market efficiency, again, it just means that the market is efficient if you can't make money from it. Now, there's different kinds of market efficiency. There's, let's use blue. There's the, the most, the broadest kind of market efficiency is weak form. Weak, very weak efficiency. Meaning, um, the market is at least this efficient, probably. In, in what sense is it weak? It just uses the history of the past prices. The markets are weakly efficient if you can't make money using past prices. Now, if you ask finance people, almost all of them believe that's the case. In other words, what's called technical trading, or charting, or looking just at past prices to predict future movement, that should not make money on average in the long run. Sure, anybody can guess. Anybody can guess it's going up and be right. But you, it should not be a way that you can consistently, profitably make money. Just about everybody in finance believes that markets are weak form efficient. Now, that's to distinguish from other forms of efficiency like, that are sometimes called strong or semi-strong or divided into where the information is coming from. This would be, for example, all publicly available information. You can't make money from publicly available information. Once the news item is out, the, all of that information is reflected in the market price. and You can't do any better. But a strong form of efficiency, the strongest form would say that even private, secret, hidden information that only the CEO knows is also already reflected in the market. How could that be? 
basically through insider trading and other situations. The CEO knows that the price of the stock is too low, he'll buy a little bit until he feels comfortable with it, he feels that that's the right price, because if it's any price below that, there's profit to him. In that way, the belief is that markets become could be even strongly efficient if even private information does not generate extra money. Now, very few people believe that the market is strongly efficient. After all, if you have insider information, you should make some money. Or if you have a better understanding of something, you should make some money. That's what people tend to believe. But weak form efficiency, that just past prices, not even earnings or anything else, just the history of past prices, should not be able to predict future prices. Just about everybody believes that. So we have these two concepts of efficiency. A market is efficient if, you, if past prices do not predict future returns. And an algorithm is efficient if it can be computed quickly. Most computer scientists say P does not equal MP. Most finance people say the market is weakly efficient. It seems like they're completely different worlds. They, they, only have a, they share a common word efficiency, but that's just by accident. It's just a coincidence. In fact, we don't know the, true about, the truth about either of these questions. Are markets efficient? Who knows? You can try to look at data and try to decide. We don't know. Does P equal NP? We don't know. What I will show you is this. Markets are efficient if and only if all algorithms are efficient. Markets are efficient if and only if P equals NP. And if markets are inefficient, you have a counterexample, then P does not equal NP. How can we show that? It's actually, the intuition behind it is really easy. And let me show you. Uh, think about how many different uh, trading strategies there are. So let's say the market can either go up or down, and then down or up, and we have a sequence of those kinds of movements in the market. It's either up or down. Each of those days, how many different strategies are there? Each of those days, you could either buy or sell. Right? On this day, you probably, in retrospect, you want to buy. But ahead of time, you don't know, you could have either bought or sold. Here you could have either bought or sold. Here you could have either bought or sold. Here you could have either bought or sold. If there are n trading days, if there are n ups and downs, or ticks, or whatever you want to think about it, then there are 2 to the n possible portfolios, possible strategies. This is like search. If you want to search through all of them, that's exponential. That's non-polynomial. Now, given one particular one, like one that, for example, following a plus always buys, or following a minus always sells, remember, this, it has to depend only on past prices. To check it, it's easy. You either made money or you didn't. And you can check if it's statistically significant, whatever you want. It's very fast. But finding one in this, in, in this huge space, that's really hard. That's really hard. If you can find one, if you can find a strategy that always works, then P does not equal NP. Because, uh, this is the, the key point, if you can find one, can anybody else find one? Are you Solomon trading against peasants? If you are, then this was really hard to find, and you with some brilliant insight figured out which strategy worked, and you're making money for it, from it. Good for you. But if, ter if it turns out that P equals NP, that's a mathematical reality, then we are all Solomon. We can all find this strategy, and if we all find this strategy, we will all trade based on the strategy, and there will no longer be any profits left over. The reverse is also true. If, not, so what I've shown is that if markets are efficient, then P equals NP. The reverse is also true. If P equals NP, then markets are efficient. Anybody can solve this quickly and find every strategy that works. Every way you look at it, there, you can prove that it's the exact same thing. You can't have an efficient market unless everybody can compute all of these complicated things. And if everybody can compute all of these complicated things in the market, then you can solve any search problem. You can find a needle in any haystack essentially by programming the market. The market is comprised of all these brilliant people who somehow are able to solve all these crazy searches. There is not a single algorithm 
This is how deep the market efficiency hypothesis is. It means there's not a single trading strategy, not a single algorithm that will generate excess returns. Not one. That means the traders are in some sense all Solomons. All of them. Or at least sufficient majority that the prices are correct. Let's use that. Let's use that. Pick any problem you want. You want to find a needle in a haystack? You want to solve chess? Whatever it is. Program that in, into the market. And I, there's a technical way of doing it. And then let the market fit, fiddle around with the prices. And if the price ends up on one level, that means the answer is yes. If it ends up on another level, the answer is no. And the market will be able to do it by assumption because it's efficient. It can solve all of these problems very fast. That's, it turns out market efficiency is a very strong assumption that implies P equals NP. We have these two groups of people. Finance people believe overall markets are at least weakly efficient, at least in terms of past prices. It seems so reasonable. Computer scientists say, well, P probably is not equal to NP. Search probably is harder than verification, substantially harder. That seems reasonable. Both of them are high academics groups here and here. Turns out they can't both be right. One of these guys is wrong. Who? I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure, but let me leave you with this. Whether markets are efficient or not is an empirical question combined with some modeling assumptions. You can check it. You can look and you can, you can imagine two different markets. One might be efficient, one might not be. It's an empirical question, something we have to look at. P equals NP is a mathematical question. There's no experiment you need to do. There's no physical thing. There's no interaction. There's no psychology involved. It's just pure math. And the solution to this, whatever it may eventually be, will be a mathematical solution. This will always be an market efficiency will always be an empirical solution. The mathematicians tend to believe that P is not equal to NP. And our natural intuitions work that way too. Search is harder. There is something different about genius. We're not all Solomon. So markets are probably not efficient. In short, this hypothesis about the efficient markets, we can write this. E, M, H. E for efficient, M for market, H for hypothesis. This is the efficient market hypothesis, that markets are efficient. It's an empirical fact. It's the, most, it's the biggest question in finance. Are markets efficient? P equals NP, that's the biggest question in computer science. It turns out, if one holds, the other holds. If the efficient market hypothesis holds, then P equals NP. If markets are not efficient, then P does not equal NP.